Hi, welcome back to the show. I uh, want to uh, thank everyone for uh, sending in some stock requests. I've gotten some pretty good comments. I want to emphasize that I would like to see more people sending in requests because what I'd like to do uh, ultimately with this show is have you know a number of people, a broader list of people sending in one or two or three symbols. And then from that point, we can pick out the ones that are the most requested. And I think it makes for a little bit better... Uh, uh, experience for everybody because we're touching on stocks that are really of interest to them. Now, I can't emphasize enough that even if it's a stock that you might not be interested in buying or you don't hold or anything like that, uh, a lot of what I'm doing is trying to teach along the way. So uh, the best case for me is to have a lot of symbols coming through, um, but we have we have enough for the show, no problem. I just want to uh, emphasize that don't feel like, you know, oh, we probably won't be able to get to mine. Uh, because again, I'm going to try and focus on the ones that are uh, the, the, of a most interest to everybody. Uh, so let's go into the agenda for today. And uh, one of the things I wanted to mention is I'm going to spend a few minutes on moving averages today. And I want to explain and maybe go a little further into price structure. Uh, and I mentioned that with the zigzag and looking at price. And I'm going to show you how I use moving averages to sort of use that and confirm that as well. Uh, also think uh, moving averages are very useful in terms of defining the longevity of the trend. And then also, uh, while I go through the stock analysis, I am going to discuss, uh, there's a lot of examples this week where momentum, it, it's easy to see the momentum or helps define the momentum using the moving average combo that I use. So uh, that's, uh, that's sort of what I want to talk about to start. And then we're going to go into the stock request. Uh, let's go ahead uh, and just briefly, I want to mention that, uh, uh, you know, the, the show here is for me to analyze your picks. Uh, my service is me going through thousands of charts and providing my stock picks. And so that's really what you're paying for. Uh, one of the main reasons why I just wanted to touch on this real quick is that I am still uh, offering a uh, discount on my service. Uh, if you pay, if you go to the uh, services page on, on RabelStockResearch.com, uh, you can go into the uh, individual package. When you sign up for the individual package and you put in stock charts in the coupon code, you will get the first two months for $50. So uh, just wanted to make sure I uh, mentioned that again. And uh, let's go ahead and get into the moving averages. So I'm using the same chart from last week. And once again, I have put the uh, higher time frame on the left, lower time frame on the right. I have no name on here, no time frames, so to speak. Uh, and the reason why I do that is I want you to understand that this left chart could be a monthly and the right could be a weekly, or we could have a 10 minute chart on the left and a two minute chart on the right. So uh, the time frames are, are up to you. Uh, the patterns and uh, the way I look at these moving averages work in all different time frames. So what I've done, I left the, the zigzag, which helps define the price structure on this chart. And so you can see the uh, higher highs and higher lows leading up to this peak uh, and then a lower high and then we make a lower low right here. And if you notice where we make a lower low, not long after that, I've got this red arrow showing where the 18 MA is crossing down below the 40. So as we make a lower low in price, not long after, there's always, a, not always, but a lot of times there'll be a little bit of lag when it comes to moving averages or even indicators like the MACD or ADX will have some lag to it relative to the price action. And so that's why I do emphasize price action uh, as first and foremost, something you need to know. Uh, but these are great supporting tools. And so the 18 crossing down below the 40 uh, gives sort of the same sort of feedback as you're getting from the uh, price structure itself. And so that helps us define that price structure, at least gives us a little bit more confidence in what's taking place on the price structure. And then we make uh, continue make a lower high, lower low, and then we reverse back up. And if you notice here where the green arrow shows the 18 crossing up above the 40, uh, it actually takes place before this, this peak is taken out by this peak. 
So I've got this uh, situation in place now where I'm getting positive feedback, where the 18 is crossing up to the upside and price structure is showing I'm making a higher high. And then we make a higher low and then we eventually make another higher high here. And so we're, we're in an uptrend while the 18 is above the 40. And then we get this violent decline to the downside. And again, when price is very violent, moving quickly, it's going to give you an earlier signal where this takes out this prior low, this swing low. Uh, here is just before a little bit before the 18 crosses down below the 40 here and then because this is a huge V bottom and it takes a long time to take out this prior peak the moving averages actually cross over first here but we're getting the same sort of similar f feedback in terms of the price structure it really helps us to define the price structure so i wanted to emphasize that and make sure you could see how and why i like to use the moving averages this way one thing i want to emphasize i don't use crossover signals as operative buy and sell signals i don't believe in that i don't think it's a good you can do back testing on it if you want uh, but i can tell you uh, for the most part it's it's sort of a loser's game uh, what it does help for me is help to define the uh, trend. And then from that point, if we're using multiple time frames, I know I've got a higher time frame that's in an uptrend. And then I can look for pullbacks and uh, corrections on the lower time frame for entry points. So it's, it's really a, a helpful tool from that standpoint. So uh, that's on the left side. So that's a higher time frame. If we look at the lower time frame, Notice how we have the same zigzag making higher highs and there's higher bottom here, 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 and then we finally make it lower low. Notice how the moving average crossover is in complete agreement with the price structure. It never crossed down. The moving average, the 18 never crossed down below the 40 until this point right here. In fact, the day after a uh, day or two after we got the lower low, we then get the moving average to cross over. That's what took place. So if you think about it in these terms, this is helping us define the longevity of the trend by looking at the moving average crossovers. Because the longer you go without a moving average crossover, the higher the probability that you know, you're going to get one. And so when I see, uh, I, and that's why I really like to look for the first couple of buy signals, first two to three buy signals uh, in a new trend. And then after that, I'm sort of getting a little leery to think we're going to get some more of a complex corrective wave to take place. So that's something I want you to be on the lookout for is watching how long these moving averages stay before reversing down. Finally, uh, the momentum. I'm going to cover that in a number of stocks. There's a lot of good examples of how I use momentum in a couple of different ways. And uh, I think that'll be uh, uh, useful in terms of uh, how you look at these moving averages as well. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the charts. So got my four stocks, uh, uh, four charts up monthly, weekly, daily, and another weekly with the relative strength up here in the top left. Uh, so the first thing, so this is the first request, uh, applied materials. And, uh, you know, the thing I want to just emphasize here is notice how this breakout here in the low to mid 60s, maybe around 70, was really the breakout area. And the where, last time you had close proximity to the 18 month line. And so we've made this sort of surging market move on this time frame. So it just makes it difficult when you're f that far away from a moving average like this, it makes it difficult to be a buyer from a longer term standpoint. However, if you see what's taking place on the weekly right now, we've, we've spent time, we had a strong move to the upside confirmed by ADX, and now we've worked our way back to the moving average environment, held the 18 week, and it looks like uh, we, we could be getting close to maybe emerging out of this. Uh, when I look at the daily chart, I kind of like to see it come back up through uh, 142, 143 with some emphasis, uh, maybe some price or volume expansion. We do have a low ADX condition on the daily chart, so I want to see a breakout and like to see pretty good action here uh, because it's it's hard to tell whether the, it, when I look at all the semis, it's hard to tell. Some look like they want to spend more time consolidating and others look like they're ready to go right now. Uh, so you have to go stock by stock. And uh, so that's my suggestion on applied materials. Let's look at a different one, which is NVIDIA. Now, this was the first one out of the gate uh, after the correction. It went, well, it was the first one into a correction on the weekly chart. 
uh, way back in the uh, middle of last year, and then it went sideways, and then we we broke out pretty quick relative to other stocks in the semi area. Had sort of a harsh pullback, but hold held key support, and then coming back up through 600 was was pretty powerful. Uh, so I don't see anything that has me overly concerned about this at this point, other than the fact that it's really extended. Um, being extended is a negative, but it's not necessarily something that caused me, you know, it's it, you can't really fault a stock for being really strong. Uh, but it can prevent you from being a buyer, but I would probably be okay with holding this. My target on this is around 840. Uh, and the way I use targets, I don't necessarily have an order waiting to sell it at, a, at that level. I would be looking at the momentum characteristics and seeing uh, if it looks like it's running out of gas or if it looks like it's climatic running into that peak uh, or into that target, then at that point, I would probably be uh, m more inclined to be a seller at that point. So that's kind of how I would use uh, the, the target levels. Speaking of target, let's look at the stock target. And this is a great example of what I was talking about when it comes to using the moving averages uh, for momentum characteristics. So I mentioned the last time how um, when the 18, uh, so let's just start with the monthly chart. The 18 crosses above the 40 and both lines are rising. To me, that sort of defines the trend as being positive. So that took place right about in here uh, back in 2019. And then we had our first pullback to that condition where the 18 is above the 40, both lines are rising. Now the momentum was confirming that, but when I can see it on the on the moving averages and I can see they're moving up at, at about the same rate, this is this is a really strong pullback from my, from that standpoint. Uh, now I would probably go down to the weekly chart to help define the entry. Um, and uh, I use this exact pattern, this two time frame pattern is actually what I talk about. Uh, one of the things I talk about in my book. So uh, something to be on the lookout for, though, is that is that pullback to moving average where the 18 is above the 40, both lines rising. Notice how we haven't had another signal like that. In other words, it jetted away on the monthly chart and hasn't given us another signal. I don't really view this as a tradable trend anymore because we're not getting orderly pullbacks. We're just getting kind of a surging market on this time frame. If we go to the weekly, though, we still have this parallel line mar uh, moving average look where I could put lines over these and they almost look parallel. They're moving up at it about the same rate. That's a strong trend and it's a tradable trend right now because we haven't really jetted away. We, we are getting, we got a pullback here. If we can get a pullback relatively soon back towards this moving average, then I would consider that sort of another buy point. If this decides not to pull back and it sort of jets away, then we probably have to go down to the daily chart. So I can sort of look at this like I had a, the last signal here on the monthly and then you jet away, last signal here on the weekly, and then on the daily chart, the last signal was here. Both lines moving up at about the same rate and a pullback to the uh, moving average and you had a nice move off of that. So that's how I would use these moving averages and it helps you define which time frame to be trading on. Let's go to the next stock, uh, DAL. So it, this is a little different in that the 18 is below the 40 on the monthly chart. So we don't really have a uptrend in place. But I will. I do want to emphasize that when when stocks get really stretched away on the downside, away from the moving average, you can go down to the smaller time frames and look for patterns to get you in for a move back up into resistance. And there were some signals in these uh, airlines and some of the other stocks uh, in the same uh, you know area that were beaten up by the uh, COVID problems uh, in, related to the economy. So. Uh, now we've kind of gotten up into this problem area around 50 and it's sort of stalling. I think there's probably support around 40. Uh, I'd like to see this 18 month moving average cup around a little bit and, and start to provide support because it's the fact that it's still declining sort of bugs me. But the moment this starts to cup around, now all of a sudden you'll have a strong move to the upside and a consolidation sideways. And that could set the stage for the weekly to get going again. So uh, intermediate term kind of neutral. Uh, and we're still kind of waiting for this monthly chart to show signs of a real turn. Let's look at T-Row. 
Uh, again, I, you know, I, I wanted to uh, emphasize that I got some requests and there were a lot, several of the requests were stocks that were really surging. And I know these are stocks uh, that the users or subscribers, uh, or viewers own, as opposed to maybe they're looking to buy. Uh, but I, I, you know, I thought it's good to look at when you see a stock move away, you know, you're getting overbought on the longer term time frame. We don't really have signs of momentum divergence that I talked about last week on this time frame on the weekly, and the moving averages are moving up at about the same rate. So does one, stocks typically top in one of two ways. Either you get mo momentum divergence in place or you get some kind of a climax. So if this were to surge to the upside with big volume and have a big run to the upside, that would probably be concerning that we're ending the, the trend on a climactic move. Uh, or if it starts to get volatile and choppy and, and, you, and you start to see signs where the momentum indicators aren't confirming, that would also be a concern. Up until that point, I think I would just keep trailing a stop based on the 18-week. I don't think there's any reason to be a hero here. Uh, BX. So last signal on BX, Blackstone, was right here. Great signal coming into the 18-month line, right around $50. And then you had a really strong move off of that. Um, Confirm that action with a low ADX pattern on the weekly chart. So this is where you had kind of the reversal move sideways. And then we start to lift off MACD reversal at the zero line on a low ADX condition. So this is a this was really kind of your last opportunity on the monthly chart using the weekly as your entry or your trigger. And then we had a pullback here. Now look, again, we're getting stretched away from the 18 week. Uh, you probably have to watch this on, an, on a daily chart if you're looking to play this. So I'm trying to emphasize the fact that it's to me, it's way too late on a monthly chart or a long term basis. Intermediate term, it's actually a little extended, probably due for a pullback. Uh, if I'm going to trade this, I'd have to do it off of a daily or even an hourly or something like that. So um, I would actually be looking and I'd probably be looking at this as a maybe an opportunity to trim this back. We have a, some signs of momentum divergence on the daily. Probably not a bad idea, depending on how big your position is. Probably not a bad idea to consider t uh, taking some uh, partial profits. Uh, Blackstone, <laughs> same pattern, right? I mean, we get this surging move away to the upside, haven't touched the 18 month in quite a while, makes it difficult to be a buyer on a monthly chart, uh, but the momentum conditions are good. ADX is rising at a pretty good pace and MACD is confirming. So I don't see a problem with the long-term trend other than the fact that it's, it's too, it's too uh, late to buy, I think right now. Um, the weekly chart still has this parallel line look to it. And just to emphasize this, draw in uh, you're sort of drawing a line over these and see if they look parallel. And it doesn't have to be exact, but you, you get the idea that they're moving up at it about the same rate. This is a solid trend. And unless we go surging away and that causes the 18 to move up faster than the 40 and creates sort of a, a an alligator look with a big open jaw, that is, uh, other than that happening, I would say this is still in a pretty solid bullish trend that you want to buy pullbacks to. Um, the other thing I'd look for is signs of momentum divergence. Neither one of those are in place. So right now, the 18, uh, using the 18 as sort of a, uh, as a mental stop point, I think is a good uh, uh, way to look at this chart right now. Let's look at GE. GE is different. We've gone through a major decline phase on the monthly, and now we went from a new low down here in the single digit area all the way to a new high. Now that puts it in overbought condition because we've made a big move straight up to new highs. And this is a good spot for this to take a breather and consolidate. And if you notice, we're still pretty far away from uh, the 18 month line and it hasn't crossed above the 40 yet. So it is a little early from a long-term standpoint, uh, but I like the looks of this on a weekly chart. Look at the move uh, and the momentum uh, characteristics to the upside. And as we've been going through this consolidation, it's been pretty orderly. 
more like sideways rather than really ratcheting. And there's really not been much volume to speak of. So I think overall this looks pretty good. Uh, I think there's a lot of support closer to 12, 12 and a half, but you know, it's very possible. This is just going to kind of work sideways right now uh, rather than uh, have any kind of a big drop. Uh, and that's how you work off the overbought condition in this case. So uh, 12 and a half should be a pretty interesting point to keep an eye on this. CRL, we're going back to the same sort of surging market on the monthly chart. I mean, powerful move confirmed by momentum. Um, and no signs of momentum divergence or anything on this time frame. But if this were to keep going at this point in any length, you'd start to think that this is getting a little climatic. I mean, it's already pretty close. What we don't have is the weekly chart signaling some type of a, a divergent sign. And we don't have it really jetting away on the eight, on, from the 18. If we jet away from the 18 after jetting away on the uh, on the monthly 18, then I'd start to get more concerned and I'd want to be uh, probably taking a greater portion of profits. I don't have a problem reducing the risk in this by taking partial profits along the way, but I don't see any signs that this is uh, trend is about to end uh, right away at this point. GNRC, uh, last great signal on the monthly chart. Right at the right to the uh, 18 month, where both lines were rising at about the same rate, right around 100 was the signal. Uh, nice looking pattern on the MACD and the ADX. Uh, so, I mean, that really was the last time it came anywhere near the 18 month line. So, from a longer term standpoint, that was sort of your last entry point. Uh, if we go to the weekly chart, we just had a primo entry on the weekly. Uh, 18 and the 40 are rising at about the same rate. We have good supporting evidence from the ADX showing strength. And this last pullback would have been a nice entry uh, using the daily uh, and this pattern, this sideways pattern and then emergence out of it as your signal. So we've gotten a little bit away from the 18 week. We're short a short term overbought. Um, don't get too consumed with the fact that the 18 has not confirmed yet here. If you, uh, I'm sorry, that the MACD hasn't confirmed yet this new high. Even though we've made a new high here, it's very possible if this lingers for another week or two that the MACD will go up and confirm. One of the things I like to look at is the when when the price works all the way back down to the 18, I like to look at the ADX. If it works its way back down to uh, the 25 level, then I like to start over and say, okay, now I've got the green DI starting up again. And now I'm looking for divergence on this green DI. If it makes another, if it makes a pullback and then a higher high or a lower high when price makes a higher high, that would be a divergence I'd be on the lookout for now. Uh, let's move on to the next stock. Uh, similar characteristics, strong move on the uh, monthly chart with confirming momentum characteristics uh, as well. Uh, we've had a few pullbacks, but nothing recently. If you notice, just in the last move, this last pullback did not touch the 18. So we could be getting into a phase where we probably need to start watching the daily for entries if we want to play this. And that tells me that the long-term trend is getting a little overdone. The intermediate-term trend might be getting a little overdone if this continues to climb. And that the only way to play this from here, if we were going to be a buyer, is off the daily, which is more of a shorter-term trend. So uh, just kind of keep that in mind if you're looking to play this. If you're long this stock, there's no sign of momentum divergence and there's no sign of climax. So continue to trail. You can draw a trend line in if you want, or you can use the 18-week. Ford Motor had this surging move to the upside, a little bit different in terms of some of the others that we're using. It's extended away from the 18 month, but this, this trend is just starting. Uh, th I thought this was a really nice signal down around 12, 12 and a half. Uh, we had a really nice pullback on the uh, 18 week. And look at how the 18 and the 40 were, were almost exactly parallel at that point. It's really good confirming evidence, confirming the ADX strength. Good thing to be on the lookout for when you're looking at your stocks. And this tells me that this is sort of the trend time frame. This is the time frame that's tradable right now. This isn't tradable. It's a, it's a bullish trend, but it's not really tradable because you're nowhere near the moving average. If you pull back here and let this moving average catch up a little bit, this could be another buying opportunity. Uh, for now, uh, the momentum is showing maybe a little bit of slowdown, so we should get a pullback towards the uh, 18. Uh, a little too late to be a buyer, but I, I would probably stick with this if I were 
in it, uh, at least own partial position. Uh, the, this type of run to the upside certainly warrants taking some partial profits. Uh, Microsoft, same deal. One of the best looking longer term charts you'll ever see. It, it uh, has, uh, the, just to give you an idea, the ADX crossed above 50 back in the middle of 2017 and has been above 50 since that time. So we're talking about a power trend. When a stock stays, uh, really if, a, if the ADX stays above 25 through peaks and valleys, that's a power trend. But when a, when a stock uh, doesn't even come down below 50 on a specific time frame. You're talking about an incredibly powerful trend, but it isn't early. I mean, this has made a big move. Uh, you'd want to be more of a holder in this stock, I think, than a buyer. Uh, we kind of lost our last opportunity to buy this pullback on the weekly chart here. Uh, and then, you know, so if you want to trade this, you probably have to look for a pullback on the daily chart, recognizing that it's late on the longer term time frame. Uh, Nucor broke out of this and made a monster move, but we've gotten a pretty big reversal here on the monthly chart with a big red bar reversal. And this is a fairly climatic looking uh, selling action with the big red bar on the weekly. Uh, so there really isn't any signs of momentum confirmation, but it was sort of climatic in the way that it played out. I, I expect this to spend a few months in corrective uh, process uh, and take a little bit more time. The first area we want to be watching this is when it comes into the 18 week and we want to evaluate what it looks like at that point. So uh, I think it's probably uh, longer term OK, but intermediate term, I bet there's more consolidation coming. Probably have time for one more stock here. So uh, PayPal, uh, it never has come back to the 18 month line, but we've gotten a lot of opportunities uh, in the, at near the 18. Now, sometimes you'll break the 18 and kind of come in the zone between the 18 and the 40, and that's totally fine as long as this 18 keeps rising. And uh, that really has been the case here. Uh, I'd probably look for a pullback a little closer to 280, uh, as the next kind of buying opportunity in this momentum is starting to pick up a little bit on the on the uh, on the daily chart and we have low ADX on the uh, on the weekly. So it's a nice combination. Uh, overall pattern looks pretty good. Um, it is because this has made such a big move. You have to sort of look at this as more of a short term intermediate term play from here as opposed to something you want to put away uh, for, say, the next, uh, you know, uh, year, two year, three year. You, you need to move a little closer to the 18 month moving average before you would look at something like that. Uh, let's look at one more stock. I'm going to look at this MOS. Uh, this is a nice turnaround that's developing on the monthly chart. Big move to the upside, testing this prior high. So we made it up through 20, which was like the first resistance point. And then we had running room up to the next resistance on the monthly. And so that helps us define what type of move we have and how much room we have. Now we're going through a correction, pretty heavy selling volume there. Uh, so just kind of want to be aware of that. Uh, that kind of ends the... Uh, the time we have today. Make sure you get your stock picks in. And uh, and, and my information is here, rablestockresearch.com. You can get contact information from me uh, on there, as well as you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, we'll see you next week. Have a great long weekend. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, Hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.